Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Earthly Headlines. Um, today we're going to talk about more ancient hominids. These, This time really, really old ones. Well, one really, really old one. And one that is still pretty old, but not as old as the other one. And we're going to talk about some geography and topography and stuff like that. And glaciers. So, um, uh, let's start with the first uh, discovery, which is the oldest hominid bones found in Poland which belonged, finally they figured out that it belonged to a Neanderthal child whose fingers were chewed off by a giant bird, allegedly. First of all, let's look at the topography of Poland for a second. And this is pretty interesting. So if you look at this, you can see that in the center, uh, the western, the northern part, some parts of the east and the central plains, all of this is really low, close to sea level, as you can see. Um, that's largely because this place was dominated by glaciers and glaciers were literally passing over that part of the country during the last ice age around the time that this um that this sapiens was found and as you can see on the bottom part this is the carpathian mountains and where the body was found was do you see where Krakow is it's this part right here it was found in a cave around this area and this is all higher elevation. So once you put this in the context of the topography, it makes sense that if they're gonna find bones that are really old, it would be here. Because it wouldn't really make sense for them to find something like a bone in the lowlands, because at that time, it was an uninhabitable. Unless you, know, you find something like, uh, like a really, really rare case like the Iceman which is not even that old compared to this. With that in mind, um, let's continue with the article. So the discovery was made at Jaskinia Simna Cave in southern Poland's M Malopolska re region, which again is right here, close to Krakow, right here. And um, the researchers found finger bones belonging to a Neanderthal child who lived about 115,000 years ago. Um, so th this makes the bones more than twice as old as the previously uh, recognized oldest hominid in the area, which was about 52,000 years old. So that, that's pretty, it, that in and of itself right there is highly significant. And they found out that the child was around aged five to seven and might have been killed by an animal. And the, the reason why they think that is because they, they saw some chew marks on its hand and on its uh, f uh, fingers when it died, but I don't know if that happened after the fact that the child died. Maybe the child died of sickness and then there was like a carrion bird that came after it was dead, or if, if the child got lost and it actually got killed by this bird. But either way, a child died and um, somehow was preserved. Pretty interesting how they found it. So one of the professors, he says, he explains that the remains were originally found a number of years ago when the archaeologists explored an area several feet below the present-day uh, cave's floor. And then they found the bones mixed in with a bunch of other bones of an other animals. So wh why the bones were mixed in with all these other animals is a mystery, of course. But, I mean, there could be a, a, a lot of reasons why that is. It could probably be um, maybe construction, modern-day construction kind of shuffled all the soil around and kind of uh, packed everything together or maybe an earthquake or a uh, heavy rain something like that um, the origins of the bones were not immediately clear so it took years of detailed analysis before the researchers determined that they did indeed belong to a neanderthal so the first point of contention was whether it was a neanderthal or not a lot of uh, scientists and rightly so they were concerned that it could be like a false positive, right? Like it could be something else. Maybe it could be like a, a lesser hominin, maybe a, a great ape or something like that. They, they, they didn't really know, but for sure, according to them anyway, it's a Neanderthal. And what further backed up this notion was the fact that they found Neanderthal stone tools nearby at, a, at, a, at the same cave site. So uh, put two and two together, in all likelihood, it probably was a Neanderthal, that, that child. And I think th these are the, the bones right here. He, see how small they are? Those little tweezers that he's uh, picking that up with? That, <laughs> to the untrained eye, that could just be whatever. It could be anything, right? I could totally see myself as a kid just 
finding that and just chucking them across the the river. I mean, they don't look very spectacular at all. They look peculiar, but I mean, they don't look like that. If I saw that, I wouldn't immediately think a human finger. So this segues into another find, which although the 150,000 year old bones in Poland are uh, said to be the oldest in the country, but it's nothing compared to what they found in Morocco, which is um, a 2017 uh, researchers concluded that the bones from Morocco, they were uh, 315,000 years old, which we'll get into in a second. Uh, I want to finish this though. When you couple these two uh, discoveries, the 315,000 year old sapiens, and then this Neanderthal um, earlier, then you have to con- at least consider the possibility of them, of the two species, A, co-mingling together and living at the same time, which is kind of a foregone co- conclusion now with all this stuff coming to light. And number two was what, in Poland especially, that homo sapiens and neanderthals probably arrived in that country about 300,000 years or some some scientists go as far as 600,000 years for the neanderthals but there just ha- there hasn't been enough uh smoking gun evidence yet to make that claim uh boldly and 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 uh with all confidence but 300,000 years is the con- consensus with uh, a lot of the scientists about when the neanderthals came in t- came into and settled uh areas like Poland and other parts of Europe. And also in their publication, they added that these hominids lived in the southern part of Poland at a time during the Ice Age when glaciers were covering most of the country. Yeah, so like I said earlier, um, oh, let me go back to the... So you guys see all these little lakes right here it's on the littered across the northern part of Poland and stuff? It reminds me a lot of Minnesota and the Great Lakes in, in North America. And a lot all those are freshwater lakes. And the reason why they're fresh water is because there there was glaciers there, obviously. When you see a lot of lakes like that, it usually means that there was at some point in time, and especially in the Ice Age, there were there is a lot of ice around. And um, I think that's very important to keep keep in mind when we're looking at at the evidence here, and where the Neanderthals probably lived, which. They were probably a lot of them were probably cave dwellers because that was the that was probably one of the safest places to live in at the time. Okay, so let's go to the guy in Morocco that they found. So they found three hundred thousand year old bones and stone tools uh, that were discovered. I think sixty two miles west of Marrakesh. So there was a group of people that lived in a cave overlooking the landscape and they were homo sapiens no doubt the caves called jebel irhud they marked the earliest fossilized remains of hopi homo sapiens ever found so there was the the previously oldest recorded homo sapiens were found in ethiopia which were dated between 160 to 195,000 years old and this was these were the oldest for a while up until last year and the a large reason a large part of the equation of dating the Jebel Erhud bones were had to do with the stone tools as well because they found they found the the body itself the remains itself but then the the stone tools were dated at older than the actual body 315,000 years old so the the range that they're giving just to be cautious is 280 to 350k but the body itself i think is three it's it's in the high 200s i think <clears throat> but anyway it's not this article brings up a good good point it's not just when these people died that matters but where so like i said earlier a lot of the out of Afri- africa theory a lot of that hinges on homo sapiens coming out of east africa mainly ethiopia but now that there are older people in what's known as um green sahara that part of north africa is it just kind of throws a whole monkey wrench into that idea 
out of Africa might still be true, but it but it's not out of East Africa anymore. That much is is established now that if you were to accept this evidence, a lot of people won't accept this evidence, obviously, just because um, they just don't. It just comes down to not believing the dating and believing the techniques and science. And that that I understand that perspective as well, but it's still. I don't know. It, there are bones there and there are tools there. You can't just explain that away either. So their presence in North Africa complicates what was once a tidy picture of humanity arising in the east of the continent. Uh, what people, including myself, used to think was that there was a cradle of humankind in East Africa about 200,000 years ago, and all modern humans descend from that population. And this is Philip Gunns from Max Planck Institute for, uh, for Evolutionary Anthropology. So this guy's uh, this guy is no joke. He's a big deal. Uh, the new finds indicate that Homo sapiens is much older and had already spread across all of Africa by 300,000 years ago. That's that is very important distinction. Okay, they they were already abundant 300,000 years ago. So who knows how long they were around before then? Like how long did it take them to get to that point? And I've said that so many times now. It should be a T-shirt. But how long were they there before they got to that point? Um, of being widespread all across Africa. And Africa is gigantic. It, it's way bigger than the con continental United States. And the homo people like us, Homo sapiens, our species were, were around and they had culture and they weren't just uh, Stone Age people. I mean, they had their own uh, system of how they lived. They had their own society. Uh, they really show that the African story of our species is more complex than we used to think. Of course, it's probably more complex now. Uh, Jebel Erhud rose to promise in 1961 when miners turned the site into a quarry, of course. Uh, they were looking for minerals, but to their surprise, they found a fossilized skull, skull. Then they found more bones, and they found a jaw. They found more fragments. They found hips. Uh, they found three specimens that were controversial, but they did not record their exact location and that made it really difficult to work out the age because part of part of the um dating process has to do with what strata of of soil they found it in what strata of the earth they found it in so the fact that th all these bones got jumbled around and moved around uh very uh haphazardly it did it did, didn't do the scientists any uh, favors in terms of trying to figure out how old it was. So because of that, the scientists initially were in their in initial incorrect um, thoughts that the remains were 40,000 year old Neanderthals. And they were wrong because they weren't Neanderthals and they weren't 40,000 years old. And um, it's amazing how they're able to correct that after, uh, you know, getting off on the wrong foot, so to speak, in terms of their analysis. So after, after that dating, they kind of ignored it for a while. And then 2004, Jean-Jacques Hublin from the Max Planck I Institute, <clears throat> he led a team back to the site. He cleared away all the debris and he searched for more just fresh fossils. And after a short amount of time, they found some. They found the skull, facial bones, a complete jawbone, adult jawbone, and other bits and pieces from at least five individuals. So there's probably more out there. I mean, it didn't take them long to find fresh new bones. The one, th one of the features of the skulls that took them aback was the, the their the back of their heads were very different. Um, so our modern humans now, our our skulls are round, but theirs were lower on the top and longer on the back. So if you saw them from the front, they would look like a normal human. But if you saw them from the side or the back they would look more primitive. They'd look more like Homo erectus. Um, and Gunn says you wouldn't be able to find anyone with a brain case that shape. So the person on the right is a modern human, and then the ones they found at Jebel Erhud is one on the left. And you can see that it's... From the front, yeah, it does look the same. They have a more pronounced brow. Um, and they look like they have bigger eyes and a larger nose, but, um, yeah, the side of their skull is, is just a lot bigger. Um, their brains also might have been shaped differently. It seems that the size of the human brain had already been finalized by 300,000 years ago. 
um, but its structure and its abilities perhaps were fine-tuned over the subsequent millennia of evolution so between us now and 300,000 years ago the them uh, <clears throat> the hominid Zen our brains kind of morphed in structure based on basically our our evolution and the environment it's not that our brains got bigger since then it's our capabilities changed based on what was around us and what we had to deal with as a species and we changed accordingly kind of like a blob right um so they also found small pieces of flint with sharp edges these had been clearly heated in the past um and they were dropping stones on the ground and starting fires on top of it. And <clears throat> the fact that they did this is was intricate to how they got to the dates. So the team exploited this incidental heating to date the tools. Over time, flint gradually builds up a small charge as it reacts to natural sources of radiation around it. That charge dissipates whenever it's heated before growing again. So just to recap, it gets heated, the charge dissipates, and then until it's heated again, it, it grows. So by testing the stones, they were able to work out how much charge the stones had accumulated since they were last heated. And it's kind of like a breadcrumb situation. They were able to trace how old it was through a technique known as thermoluminescence. Um, and then what they found was the tools were roughly 280,000 and 350,000 years old. So that was the last time, around that age date was the last time those, those tools were heated. So that's that's a range of 70,000 years. That's a long, long range. So here are some of the tools that were heated. Um, it's amazing that they were using this back then. Uh, and by the way, this is called the Middle Stone Age. So 300,000 years ago around there was the Middle Stone Age. Uh, so the team, they cross-checked those dates by estimating the ages of the fossils. So they did that. 10 years ago using the fossils collected in the 60s and with those fossils they came to an age of 160,000 years but um, that 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 those hypotheses were kind of faulty and because of what I mentioned before the sediments were all jumbled together and they, they were it was just guesswork basically so the team took careful readings of the site they redid everything they redid their calculations and then they got a much older date of 286,000 years, which falls in line with the thermoluminescence dating of the tools. So there's a consistency there. It's, it's the two pieces of evidence, the tools and the fossils themselves, they're congruent. And that's a big deal. Otherwise, this whole that none of this would have been published in the first place. Um, <clears throat> so obviously, the new dates radically changed the, the family tree of our species. Um, scientists had always viewed these people as a primitive group of humans who were clinging on in North Africa while their more modern cousins were sweeping out of the east. But now it's probably flipped. People thought that North Africa had nothing to do with modern human evolution and that this was a relict population. Now we know that they're close to the root of Homo sapiens in the lineage. Yeah, so instead of, instead of them being left in the dust by the Eastern Africans, they were all pretty much the same, and they all came from somewhere else. They don't know where now. They originally thought it was Ethiopia, but now all bets are off. Uh, the new specimens cast fossils from other parts of Africa in a new light. For example, the so-called Florisbad Skull, which was discovered in South Africa in 1932, is around 260,000 years old. Um, and a lot of people had a hard time accepting that as a member of Homo sapiens because they're like, this too old. It can't be Homo sapiens. It's got to be something else. But since this came out, since this work brings the Floresbad school back into the discussion, it kind of brings some relevancy and some credence to uh, that school that they found in 1932. So if the skull really did belong to a member of our species, it means that around 300,000 years ago, humans had already migrated across the African landscape and were evolving at a continental scale. Re that is the alternative. So instead of everything coming out of East Africa, 300,000, if you took a snapshot of 300,000 years ago, the, the humans had already done the hard part. They had already migrated across the landscape and they were already thriving on all parts of the continent in Africa. 
And again, like I mentioned before, Africa is gigantic, so it must have taken some time before that. So um, other people are kind of um, critical. They, they're not sure whether it's a breakthrough in understanding of human evolution. <clears throat> um, some others suggest that the origin of our species was tied to the dawn of the Middle Stone Age, basically 250, 300,000 years ago. Um, those tools from, a, from the Middle Stone Age had already been found in other parts of Africa, so the Jebel Irhud finds supportive hypothesis that has been around for a while. So, so uh, this idea isn't anything new. It just hasn't been popularized because there wasn't enough hard evidence to get behind it until now. Um, the bones and stones are telling different tales. The stones were all over Africa by 300,000 years ago, and the fossils were apparently no older than 195,000. So were the tools even made by Homo sapiens or some other hominid? This was the, the, the question. This was the debate for a long time. How could you have tools that were 300K plus years older than the actual um, fossils themselves? Well, part of the reason was the fossil, their initial fossils weren't dated correctly. So there was a disjuncture. There was a major transition in behavior, but no biological transition to go with it. Now, Jebel Irhud uh, fills that gap nicely. Like I said, there's congruency now. Um, it's possible that people spread all over Africa aided by their new stone technology, which allowed them to kill large animals from a, from a distance. Uh, certainly the Sahara would have permitted their passage because at the time it was a lush green savanna and it wasn't a desert. So there was a lot of, a lot of food and hunting to go around. So one view is that this technology from the Middle Stone Age allowed the Homo sapiens to spread all across continental Africa. The alternative view was humans were already spread throughout the continent and these Stone Age tools were sprung up amongst regional innovators, kind of like the 100th monkey event. Like they, one group developed it here and then it spread there. So what, basically what came first, the chicken or the egg in this sense? Did the humans come first or did the tools allow the humans to get to where they were found now today? Uh, we're not sure. We need more evidence. Um, so basically, this this uh, these bones are these finds are very important because they're placed at a critical time period, three hundred thousand years ago, when the earliest members of our species could could have evolved, and they're critical for better understanding the pa patterns of physical and behavioral evolution among human humans across the African continent. They confirm the pan African nature of human anc uh, ancestry, and that's true. It doesn't necessarily have to be localized in Ethiopia, although. There are, there's a lot of evidence that was found there. They just haven't found all the other, other evidence. So, um, what, some of my questions with this are how long, like the, the cranium thing, let's go back to that photo, uh, right here. So if, if this skull on the left is indeed 300,000 plus years old and this is a modern human on the right so is that how long it takes does it take how long does it take for the brain case so to speak to change am am amongst a human population does it take 300,000 years is it shorter is it 5,000 years is it a few hundred years um, I guess it depends on the pressures of the environment but let's just say we took a uh, let's take a population of 10,000 modern humans from, let's say, San Francisco, and let's put them in a completely different environment full of, uh, of like a jungle, let's say, and they had to survive there, assuming that they could survive there. After a few generations, how long before we see a, a, a morphing in their cranium capacity? Not just their capacity, but their structure. Um, that's a, that's the million dollar question here. I think the billion dollar trillion dollar question here. Um, and I think until we really answer that, we're going to get a lot of people who think it's just BS or the, f or people who will say that the skull on the left can't be homo sapiens just because it's, it's too big. But, um, I don't know. I think it could be homo sapiens or homo something, um, that eventually became us. And, 
I'm sh- I don't know if that's true or not, but that would be my wild guess w- with what's on the table now. And of course, I'm open to everything that comes out. But let me know what you guys think. Is this possible? Is this a hoax? Um, is do you guys have any other uh, um, examples that you could that you could cite that it, that kind of is reminiscent of these finds? Let me know in the comments, please, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.